This was 2010. Every dollar that was spent by the federal government, 36 pennies of it had to be borrowed. <clears throat> Up to 2011. Today, 42 cents of every dollar it spent is being borrowed. <clears throat> if you absorb that, the, when I really started to understand the scale of this, and now there's one other little kicker. Would you believe there's a bunch of things that aren't even on the books? Yes. Now the wars have been on the books the last couple of years, but Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, about $160 billion, the largest bailout in U.S. history, aren't on these. There's hundreds of billions of dollars that are basically borrowed money that aren't showing up in this system right now. That's a great ring. <laughs> All right, and, and did he also send you my uh, marginal tax rate slide? Um, I'm going to show this one, and then I want to bounce that one. Th this one was just important because revenues is to GDP. When GDP's been up, when GDP's been down, when it moves up and down, we get about 18.2%. But take me to that marginal tax rate slide. Okay, this slide is really, really, really important to absorb. The green line is tax, marginal tax rates. So you go back into the 50s and 60s, and we had these very high marginal tax rates. And it came down, came down, came down, came down, and then went up a little. But does anyone notice something magical? Revenues, even in times of very high marginal tax rates, it's about 18.2. In times of very low marginal tax rates, it's 18.2. Uh, economists often refer to this as there's a normalizing effect. That somehow people invest less, they work less, or they work more, this, but somehow it always seems to sit. And we have about 50 years of data now. So it's no longer a theory. We have lots of math behind it. That during times of very high marginal tax rates, we get about 18.2% of GDP and revenue and times of mar low margin tax rates, we get 18.2. That's really important because, keep going, as we walk through some of the slides, you're going to understand some of the really interesting questions we're going to have to deal with this year, and I'm going to need your help and your input. 2010, does anyone want to share with me what makes up discretionary? All defense, um, but also every program you can think of, EPA, HUD, foreign aid, everything you can think of is in that. Mandatory is Medicare, Social Security, programs like that. Debt service? Um, actually, no. Uh, believe it or not, I believe uh, debt service is even in discretionary, uh, which, is in, which is actually a brilliant question because I'm actually running a piece of legislation to change the priorities of that to keep the bond markets from doing something bad. 2010, 63% of all spending was mandatory. These are really important, and actually, it, it took us a little while to build these slides. Um, just mandatory spending, discretionary spending. Revenues and revenue from selling bonds and debt. Does anyone notice where, if you were to line up where the revenues cross? We don't take in enough money, and this is 2010, enough money in revenues to cover the entitlements. Here's what happens now over the next 18 years as the baby boomers begin to retire or turn 65 because we get 10,000 a day, one every eight minutes. And that's the panic. Over the next 18 years, we have to sell massive, massive, massive amounts of debt um, to cover the baby boom population. And they've already spent the money. All that money and savings that was supposed to be there, they've already spent it and it's in IOUs.